And we were talking how we wanted to change. We have changes in stroke programs that we're trying to implement and improve. We've had STEMI improvements for patients having myocardial infarctions. And we said, you know, we always have this thing, people that cardiac arrest. And that then became personal. Because of my dad uh, passing away in 1982, I become a paramedic because of uh, the feelings. I remember those paramedics coming in and I, I, I said, what if we can make a little bit more of a difference on those patients? If we could have more people survive cardiac arrest and live to tell about it. And, and I mean, how great is that? Life continues. Uh, but one of the things was uh, getting an invitation to where the Resuscitation Academy originated, and Tom from South Carolina put us in contact with uh, the Resuscitation Academy out there and the leaders. Uh, and Seattle has had the highest ROS rates or return of spontaneous circulation or survival of these patients over uh, the last, uh, at least that I can, I know, 10 years and they're the highest in the country. So clearly we said, they've gotta be doing something right. This is what we need to do. So here we are in 2018 and, and we've had agencies from over 13, 14, 15 different uh, towns, counties attend. Here in Broward County, and we hope this spreads across the entire state of Florida, there are so many professional rescuers. I've been in the room training with them. Uh, some very, very high quality uh, EMTs and paramedics here. And they absolutely want to go out and do their best uh, for their communities and save as many lives as possible. So one of the best parts for me is having been worked in many great places over the years and improved survival rates in various places is to come into a place like Florida where the attitude is remarkable that the uh, that there are people who are really good at creating teamwork that there are people who really want to go to the next level and so this is a perfect fit having the academy here many things we go over in this program are you know, things we know about already that's important to do CPR early defibrillation you know airway control or whatever it may be but the fact of the matter is that this program can save lives because it, it really does foster teamwork it really does foster um, better uh, performance of the CPR with technological feedback, and mostly, uh, and most importantly, it's being used uh, in a group of people who really want to make things better. So it will get better, it will improve outcomes and make life better for future generations. Uh, when, when I looked out the window up on that third floor and I could see all those trucks uh, parked out there, it was, a, it was a, a thing of beauty, knowing that everything that we had done uh, and the support from all the agencies and all the chiefs and all those medical directors, you know, pushing forward and, and getting the message out that this is important was, was huge. It really was uh, heartwarming uh, to see that the mission that we had or our goal was being achieved. This is the icing on the cake for our providers themselves to all be here, hearing it themselves from experts from around the country is a very powerful thing. It's really excited about it. I think it's the camaraderie that's happening here is that we have agencies from all over the county, actually from three counties, and we kind of look at each other and say, hey, we're in this together. And so the fact that we can bring everyone together in one room and say, kind of shake hands and say we're on a mission to actually change the outcomes for our citizens that's the most magical thing happening here. Those little nuggets, we call them. Gold nuggets that are going to make the difference that you can incorporate in different places that are going to make you better. And when they go upstairs and they divide into those groups, the upstairs is where the magic happens. That's where the mannequins are, the feedback, uh, where we really learn how good we are or how good we thought we were. They are very enthusiastic. I think, you know, they all kind of start out like watching like, okay, all right, what are they going to do now? And, and then pretty soon we bring out the mannequins and they get to work and then they're cheering over their scores and giving each other high fives that they are improving and they get done and they say, you know, I had never thought about this, but we could do this. The professionalism is amazing and the buy-in is amazing, you know, and that's one of the things, you know, this is day two for me. We're doing three days, which is a pretty daunting task. We've never done it that way before. Um, but everybody is walking away with something, and they'll tell you that, you know, and you can see it on their faces, you know. Firefighters are pretty easy to read. Whenever they, uh, they smell BS, they're going to let you know. Whenever you give them something that's worth uh, taking home and, and, and putting into practice, they're jazzed about it, and that's, that's what we're seeing upstairs. They get, they get really engaged the second they, they get off 
their chairs and start putting their hands on their chest. And it's not any, it's not any one thing. Usually, it's it's kind of it's the little, it's these little things, this little nugget of um, taking, you know, saving two seconds here, saving a second there. Um, they just add up. And I think a big piece of it is just mindset change. There's a lot that I thought I knew that I found out that I didn't know. Um, just finding out about how how much coronary perfusion goes down for every second that you're not doing compressions was was pretty amazing to me. And then just thinking that we were doing good compressions and that fast was good and faster was better, only to realize that it's not. Faster is worse. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Especially growing up in team sports, this is you know, something that you know, I enjoy and you know, it's a good thing, so. Just like athletes, I mean, um, a Olympic skier knows how to go down the mountain, but they get, you know, they get coaches. Boom. They get people who can break down the tiny bits of their turns or some tiny bit of the way that they push off. Like it can make a huge difference over the length of their run. I think it's kind of the same thing here. So one of the biggest things I learned today was just ventilating was a huge thing. I had no idea that, uh, you know, we just need to give it a little squeeze this whole time to get in adequate respiration to these uh, cardiac arrest patients. Everybody knows how to do CPR, but we can take a little bit of a little bit of a tweak and say, what about instead of doing it this way, you know, what if we emphasize cutting down these pauses or um, bagging more effectively? And it's just, it's a, it's a tiny little tweak, but it, it makes a big difference, especially over the length of a resuscitation. Just judging by the level of passion and commitment that they have and the buy-in. I mean, that's a huge piece of it. It's very useful. I'm very excited. I hope that um, this technology can be brought into hospital settings since these guys are going to be so good at it um, in the field. So when they bring us the patient, we can continue the good work that has been done in the field. Yeah, so that, that was really helpful to learn. So this, this is a really good experience for me. And uh, hopefully it'll be something I can take back to my department and kind of teach the people there and kind of get our level of care to be better. So really can see how effective like your CPR is, your compressions, your ventilation, stuff like that. It's been awesome. The day's been great. I don't feel like we're having to sell this. Like it's not, we're not trying to convince them that they should do it. We just show them what's there and they're like, yeah, well, yeah, let's do that. From 5% to 67%, the high performance that they learn to provide is shown to increase with the system being implemented in every location that has established and followed this program. What does it really mean? It means more people live. And that is huge. That is, I think, what paramedics do and, and want to do. And having that opportunity to save a life is, is the job. I feel this is, uh, this is what brings everything that we've done today together. I think uh, what we do in the very end on each day um, is, is we bring in a survivor um, and we have the opportunity of putting a face to what we're teaching. You would be dead. And you can't buy. You can't buy that. The skills uh, enhancement that they get on the job, uh, that, that's, that's what saved my life. Uh, when they came to my house, uh, I, I was, for all intents and purposes, dead, uh, and they brought me back. So my vision in this whole process is this is the first step. This is the first step in, in establishing that those, those embers that are going to light fires throughout the county and hopefully spread throughout the rest of the state. This program is kind of teaching them that magic happens in the home with them, and they're going to leave here knowing that it's up to them to get them back to life. You know, I love it when I hear these guys like, yeah, we're going to do it the Florida way. I was like, yeah, you know, it's, you know, I think Broward County is going to do pretty awesome. They have pretty amazing people and the right people in the right places to make some, some stuff happen. Yeah, I think what we get out of this is uh, realizing that we can do better and realizing that the teamwork is what makes it happen. They seem really poised to just run with this. I think these guys are I think these guys are going to get some really incredible results. I think the most important thing that we're going to get out of this, we're going to give people the opportunity to see another sunrise.